Hey and welcome to this tutorial about laying out tables in Bubble. Now what you see on the dashboard here is what we're going to be working with in this video. Basically it's a dashboard that was mocked up um, quickly to just show off what needs to be put into place. In this video what you're going to learn how to do is the ins and outs of choosing rows and columns uh, when it comes to making dashboards and when it comes to making things responsive. So let's dive in. I'm going to share what you're going to learn in this is basically my thought process behind how to select rows and columns. This is really for um, kind of beginner intermediate level folks who are coming to Bubble and wanting to understand how to best uh, uh, get layouts uh, set up. and. I'll also note that basically every page could be broken down into uh, rows and columns and tables are really nice for this because it's very clear what's being broken down whereas when you're dealing with other types of you know more graphic-y kind of elements and other page stuff it's not exactly as clear but uh, the same principles apply so if you learn that here you'll be able to apply that across all of the types of pages that you would build in Bubble. So let's get started. What I'm going to share that I notice here is that Right away, I'm going to start with a uh, a row as kind of the main um, group that's going to hold all this stuff. And a row, why a row? Because things are going to go across the screen here, and they, when if something's moving this way, then it's moving across a row. Whereas if it was going from top to bottom, uh, it would be moving more down a column. Now if we did a column here, we could have this product values in a column, the outcomes, the constraints and conversions here. Obviously this is a, you know some kind of marketing dashboard that we're mocking up in today's tutorial. And what you see here is um, you know if you were to do this as a column, all these three there would be, there would be an endpoint to the first part of the column and that endpoint if it it has to be at the latest part of this product values so draw a line across that and then this goals would go with the next part of that same column as things go down the page but that would leave a huge gap between outcomes and goals so what I can see is obviously better is that the breakpoints for product values and customer value here on the right side are the same the breakpoints for the outcomes and goals what I mean is this edge here and so it's just obvious to me right away that we're going to be dealing with one two three columns across a row. Then we can break that further down. If we look at a column here, uh, yep, so column, column, column. Real quickly, if we just stare at the gray boxes, it's a column with one, two rows. And then we can break that down further, and that gives you an overview of where we're headed in this. It's gonna be a long tutorial because layouts with this level of detail, uh, that's just the way things are in Bubble because you're going to get to see all of this stuff laid out and at the end of it you know feel free to uh, skip as much as you would like or if you just really want to learn this stuff and learn how all of this stuff would be done then stay tuned that's what's coming next here we go so over in my bubble dashboard what I have set up here is I'm kind of working in a bigger dashboard and I'm building this part of this page so what I have set up is a bottom row here and this, this is this row that's going to have container stuff from the left aligned and then pushed over. And then that row is what I described that will have one, two, three columns. So I've kind of already got this set up and then notice that, you know, as I switch here, this container layout from row, this switches over to column and then column, I can put things down. And then I've got one little group in here so far uh, to talk or to start us off as we talk about what is uh, what is next for this. So that's our starting point. Let's get started. Now that we've laid this out, a row of one, two, three columns, let's get started with our first column. In our first column, we're going to have product values and customer values. And then let's think about these two. Pause the video now and think, what would you do here for the next part here? For If you have product values here, what's the next breakdown for putting in um, other groups and then think about the same for customer value. So if you've done that and you've thought about that, and here's, here's kind of the answer. We're going to break this down. You can see within this one box, we're going to have one, two um, 
row, or sorry, two columns, which since we're going left to right, we're gonna choose rows for that. So um, I'm gonna start us out here with this is our product values group. And then this will be the customer value. And I can see that these have a specific width. We'll work on the responsive stuff after a while. Basically, we want to give ourselves enough space to work with to start out. And then after that, we'll come back around and look at making this responsive. Because you can already see that if this was responsive, you would have uh, a on a cell phone, you would have this as the top part, this as the next part, and then this as the third part. And it would all be stacked vertically is how that would work. So uh, let's let's go ahead and get these kind of roughed in. We'll just center these. We'll give both of them a background color of some kind of a bit darker gray than the other gray here. And then we've also got some roundness. But we'll just go five for now. Five or ten. Let's go 10 all the way. I like that. Okay. And then let's go ahead and let this stretch to the edges. And we'll have it, we'll give it some margins. You know what? I'm actually going to delete this one out because I'm going to get this all set up and then copy and paste it over. So maybe 250 for the height. As we look here, maybe more like 350. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm, now I'm gonna copy and paste that. And this will be customer values. And I can see that that one is probably more like 250. And just give it a little bit of space and breathing room there. Okay, so that is, uh, that is our left area here. And then like I mentioned, what is what is next? What is gonna happen in these? Well, we're gonna grab a group and this, this one, we're gonna to set to a row. And what we're setting when we set something like this, we're setting the stuff inside of it, just as a reminder. And so the stuff inside of it here, we're gonna now have two rows. We're gonna have this, um, column one for the product values. So it's, let's see, we've got some this stuff here. And then say column two. Well, actually, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and define this one as well. So now, now we've got it broken down to, if we're looking at just this left part. And this left part, we have stuff going down, 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 down. So obviously what we're dealing with here now is a column for this one. And we're not gonna make this fixed with. We're gonna put two of these in here. And Okay, so now we've got our setup here. We've got a column. And let's go ahead and think about this. We're gonna have some text and then we're gonna have a bunch of stuff going down. And the way that these work is that these are actually gonna be inputs. So it's a small input where someone can type something in and then it auto binds that piece of data to the database in this particular case. Um, whereas some of these other ones like these are just pieces of text and the same with these over here or calculated things from data from the database. So let's go ahead and grab a piece of text and then we'll start building this out. If that's 14 for that for the layout, we don't want any fixed height there. And then next up, we can see we're going to work. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work our way down this column. 
with a bunch of rows. And now we can see that this row is actually made up of two items. So what we want to do, and these, these two items, boom, boom, if you look at these two items, it's like a minified version. If uh, <laughs> It's like uh, that movie Inception, the dream within the dream, we're like, you know, within groups and rows, within groups and rows and groups and rows. Uh, we're really, but what we've done and what this approach has allowed us to do is go from this very high level of one, two, three columns into now we're dealing with this column. Oh, we're going to break that into two columns. Now we're dealing with this one column. Oh, we're going to break that into now we're breaking that into one, two, or well, one, two, three rows, four, five, whatever, however many there are here, 15 or 18 or something. And then now that we're dealing with a row, well, that row is actually broken up into two columns, and it's a column of P1 and the name for this, which is an input value. So let's go ahead and grab another group. And this now we've kind of reached we've reached the lowest level of our inception dream if we use that example uh, from that uh, that movie. And so now with this we're going to call this row one, and we'll make this a row. We'll let this stretch out. There is no minimum width. And what we want to have happen here is we want a piece of text in here. And I would say that probably at this level, we could um, we could make things fixed with because when things are really small like this, you just want them to stay fixed with and everything else can move around it is how we'll uh, go about this. So actually, rather than fixed with, I'm going to do... I don't want any minimum width. It's either fixed width or fit or, or fit width to content. It's going to be one or the other. Um, uh, uh, excuse the the um, fully diving in on this fixed width because then we would just need to define how wide it is, which it looks like it is. Oh, I don't know. Um, it's one fifty eight. It's one thirty seven. So it's like nineteen or twenty one. Uh, oh yeah, there it is. So we see that 21 there. We could set it as 21 or we'd say fit with the content and since the content is static and won't change, we're good to go to leave it like that. So here we have P1 and then now we're gonna add a input here. And we'll call this input P1 name. And we'll just keep track of everything so this will be P1 name, this will be input P2 name, and so on and so forth down the, down the line. And then for the layout of these, we'll hit this so it'll stretch out to the whole vertical alignment. We can go ahead and do that here as well. Uh, and what that is doing is it's fitting it to this minimum width of 16 that exists on this one. Or actually, no, I believe it is the, uh, it is the, it is the text of this of 12, 12 times 1.5 is 18. That is what is defining, or 19, I guess it's saying, uh, defining the, the height of this. So if we want to do that, maybe we also want to do that. And just call it good enough there. So we're going to put name here and then auto bind this onto, which we won't get into in this one, but what this allows us to do is that when uh, the content of this is changed, that the we, no one has to hit save, they simply it simply updates the value of that in the database. But the other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to style this so that everything kind of looks pretty similar here. We're just going to go with black for now. For both the placeholder and this. And then now we're going to do some touch up on some margins. And then with this row in place, what we want to do is we just want to figure out what the margin should be, and then we can just repeat it down. So 
So what did I do here? I did four. Maybe I'll do four here and six here. So again, here's our column. We've filled our column in with a couple of rows so far. And maybe we want to make this border a little bit lighter. And we want to get all of this styling. We're taking the time to get all the styling uh, good or, how, or what you know looks pretty good because, so I think actually I would like some padding inside of this. And so that would be padding 10 on each side. You no, know, let's go five on each side and four top and bottom. And then I'm actually going to delete that one out and say that that's that's closer to what I'm hoping to achieve. And then for this column, I'm just going to go ahead and remove that, remove that, remove that. I would say that uh, it's not super important that we're worrying about the UI in this moment. We're just trying to get some things down onto the uh, canvas. So here we are, row two. And with all of that extra styling stuff, it's paved the way for us to be able to have the layout be pretty good. Okay, and then it looks like we've got name, value, price, COG. Input name, input value. Price. And COG, cost of goods sold. And then, okay. Uh, and then P1 gross profit, and it looks like we are going to put, so we'll take this, we'll delete, we don't have an input here, but instead of an input, we just have something being displayed. So we'll go ahead and bold that. Drop uh, maybe a margin oh, over here on the right. Ten or eight, perhaps. And I'd say that this for anyone doing first-time stuff. If you note these uh, tiny margins that I'm doing, uh, especially like for example above and below, like the padding that I gave here for top and bottom of this, uh, left and right. This will just give. Uh, these are some nice. These are some nice, very basic UI touches. I'm not a designer. Um, however, there are just some things that uh, I picked up along the way that perhaps you could pick up as well that, that could help you. So, um, and the one thing I'm noticing for this column, and this is fine to be doing it now, is that within the padding for this, from the top, I think I want to give it six here, six on the left, six on the right, so that kind of sits more inside there, it looks like. Maybe I want to go all the way, eight and eight, or ten and ten. that we can see that this for this fixed width, so actually maybe that should have been done a little bit prior to this, but if we go 100 here, or 110. In fact, if we just do this. We can see looking pretty close here, and then we're also keeping some nice consistent spacing. So here we're going to have some value on this one, and we won't get into the calculations on this. It would be dynamic, but for now we'll just say, you know, maybe this was um, what this one is sharing, negative 50. And we could decide to maybe go like this if we wanted to put that at the edge, edges, 
which it appears like kind of you know that's that's how it's intended to be here cool so that's uh that's this first part and then now actually we're just going to continue to work our way down this and here we could we could go and grab So let's see. I'm going to do a copy on that and a paste on that. I'm not able to get it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to give this a max width of 50 for now. So I can grab this, copy that. Move it down here. Delete that. And let's see, so now we're on to P3. And then it looks like we'll just have to play around with this exactly how we would like it. And then I'm just going to note because this is the start of a new section here for P3 that what we're going to do is just on this top one we're going to give this Uh, a margin of let's say 10. So it's clear that we are breaking into a new section over here. And then I'll make that last. And then I'll also I'm going to go here and clean up. So this is going to be row 5. So as tedious as this part of the uh, the work is, I think what what uh, what is being uh, offered here in the tutorial is a really step-by-step -step and very tedious way for what it means to lay out a table because that's that that's that, that's what uh, it comes it comes with the territory uh, to say that that's what what it is when you're laying out a table like this. So here we're going to say this is P three gross profit and then this one let's see what we got forty seven. And again, you would come back in here and make these uh, dynamic in your world if you were to be calculating things for real on a, on a dashboard like this. Okay. And then so our labels here is Again, this is going to be name. I'm going to say this is P2. 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 And then P2. Oh, and you know what? Uh, did not get that one. It's P3. P2 is going to be what's up in this area here. And it's really important that, especially you can see, that given the particular nature of this one with these being inputs, it's very important to know which inputs are going where because then when we tie these to the, um, the auto binding on the data in the database that's related to um, this particular uh, thing that's being showed off in this dashboard, then it's very easy to um, make the, the right connection so that the wires don't get crossed and that everything works how you intend it to work. So cool. All right, so we can see here that 
we are basically set up pretty well here with this. Okay, and so then we would want to keep continue moving here, but rather than continue moving on this one, what I'm going to do for in this moment is I'm going to take this and copy and paste it. So then I have basically this layout already set up for me there. And then I'll continue moving on the, on with this one. So we've got, looks like some new kind of fields, but now we have five of these. And then we have another one of those. So we'll go up here, do our little trick again. So we can grab and access this row. And then let's see. If we copy and paste that, note that we'll want to be sure to turn that margin off of this one. All right, so then let's see what else we got. We've got something, something, something. They're all labeled the same, and there's five of them. So why not go ahead and put this as text MMR? And we'll get these set up. So there's five of those, and then there's one of these. And we'll send that all the way to make that last. And then now we'll go and we'll do our cleanup like we've done here. And then it looks like, what is this? This is a, uh, there's values here. What we'll do is we'll just leave this as, because again, this is all about layout. So we're just gonna call this TBD, TBD. But obviously this is something that people can, can input. And then lastly here, gross profit. And it looks like at the bottom of this, uh, it could be at the bottom of this or the other one. I do want to get a 10 PX padding there. And I'll, I'll do it here just for, uh, oh, not there, here. Just for sake of consistency. However, it's not necessary because this one will not ever reach the bottom there. But so as you can see, if we were to refresh this page here, and then if we look at what we have here, and then what we've got so far for this uh, dashboard, we can see that we've got things very nicely laid out there. And at this point, I would say uh, you've learned quite a bit about everything that's necessary to lay out a dashboard like this. For the remainder of the tutorial, I will include what it would take to build out all this for the, for the, curious, um, for the curious ones. But basically, you can see that um, how it would work is with where, where this is going is that things would start to stack and we would actually well we probably wouldn't want that to stack because this is about the width of a phone anyways and so we would just want that to to uh, stay and we could we could set it up for that so I would suggest jumping to the end um, where it'll be marked on the description of when we start to work on the responsive stuff or if you'd like to hang with as the rest of this is built um, onwards we go so here we go um, Next up, now that we've got this all set up here, we do want to go back. We, we didn't change any of these yet, and so we'll want to go ahead and take our time on that. Okay, good. and it looks like Bubble is smart enough to uh, update this for us, so we'll just do that. And then we might as well get, I think this one's going to be P4. It updates our text label. Oh yeah, and this is P2. Okay, so now we've got this nice labeling system and everything is clean. But the important one here, it's, 
is less actually for those text fields. The labeling is, I'll be honest, is not super important there. What is important is for these inputs because these inputs uh, are what is tied to data. And so that it's just super clear that you're working on the, well, whatever it is that it is you might be working on if you were gonna have uh, inputs like this in your, in your dashboard layout or ever across um, some place where you wanna just have somebody be able to pop in and edit a field without clicking a save button and save it to the database. Cool, so that will do it then for this area. And we can see one of the things that I had way back, or one of the questions I asked was, pause here and think about with these, when we had just gray boxes, what are the next steps? And to recap those next steps, we looked at this and we're like, okay, it looks like two columns. Because if it was two, if it was uh, one, two, three rows, that's possible too because these uh, these stop points, these endpoints, would be clean, and basically that's what you want to look for when you're trying to decide. So we could have said that we could have made the gray box here a column, and it would have been a column of three rows. But instead, we want a row of two columns, and then. Well, actually, no. I take it back. If if you if if you had done that, where you'd have row and row, yeah, you you would have just had another column and then rows. It would have been broken down just uh, just opposite. So it it would have worked uh, the same as well. And but then here, so we just have one column with all of this stuff in it, and that was the end of that one. So let's move on to customer value. And then now that we have some things defined here, I'm just going to help help us out uh, and cheat a little bit with some copy and pasting, just so that we can. Uh, speed things along and I would recommend that you would do uh, similar at any juncture as you can because that's the power of no code is being able to do things with speed. It's customer value and then it looks like it's, it's things like this where it's just displaying some stuff except that the font is matching with this one so what we'll do here is we'll, we'll actually go ahead and delete, delete those. We've got this text, and then so it looks like this is gonna be a value at the end of the day. So let's go ahead and just make, mock up one of these, 1457. And then the power of having this row here is that we can lay it out here, and then we can take whatever text we need, in this case this, and we can pop it in here. And then we can do that for the rest of this. And we can see if our labels update for us. But basically this is a, this is just an easy part, just a bunch of static text. And we'll take this row, push it out. Take this row, push it out. One, two, three. 2205-4303. Actually, it's not important. We'll come back. Uh, it would be a different job to come back and make these dynamic. It's not really important what the placeholders say. And of course, you know, we could have done this with one, deleted some of these, and then re redid these with this uh, sideways, but whatever way is most comfortable for you to work, uh, how you can work best. So full offer, blah, blah, blah. So we'll go ahead and add one of these. And again, you know, this is a type of thing that working on these, these apps, um, you'll just be given what's necessary to, to show or display here. In some kind of mock-up, sometimes you could be in charge of uh, helping to create the mock-ups themselves. Uh, let's see, so we actually wanna, we're gonna go here, we're gonna copy the formatting, and then we're gonna paste, paste the formatting here. As you can see there, that we just um, got this whole customer value thing filled in. And we can just start uh, deleting all of this out. See if there's a better way to delete these last few items.
And then so this one, we'll just say no max height. Same with this, fit height to content. And then now we can take another preview at how we're doing compared to what it is that we're intending to build out in Bubble here today. So we can see um, overall, it's looking pretty close to what it's uh, started with and what it's intended to look like for this MVP version of a dashboard. And then now we can see that we can actually take this middle column, delete that, and we'll just pop this one over. So that's just a control C, control V is what I did to get this over here. Now let's see, this is one, two, three, four. So again, the way I look at this, um, I actually look at this because these packages of information kind of are all together. Just in my opinion, this max cost of uh, acquiring a customer and all of this, these stats related to it and then gross profit and yada yada. Um, that's what we'll be, we'll, what we'll be doing. This is probably closer to something like this. And so I definitely don't want uh, that and let's see what our font is. It's closer to this. We've got some stuff up here, outcomes. So let's start here with outcomes. And this text is just kind of hanging by itself, not in a group. Just going to update this one over here quick. Okay. So I feel like I'm going to close these ones out because we've already got them taken care of here on our elements uh, expander tree. And now this left column copy, I'm gonna rename that middle column, just to keep everything clean, which I suggest is a, is a great way when you're developing things here uh, to keep it clean so that you know what's going on and it's not uh, super confusing the next time that you come back into this app when you've worked on it maybe 10 days ago and now you have to come back and change something. So, okay, so let's see what we want to do. We want to have one of these, this style. We want to have a row. You know what? I, I said that I, I could do a row and I see these as packages of information together. However, because of the breaks of things, the way that I see this one going is that if we made this a row and then we have four elements in it, and those four elements we were spacing out using this spacer that you see here. And you can look here on this, watch them change as I change this. If you haven't worked with these uh, container alignment stuff much, now we could. We might have to have two rows of things to get our container alignments exactly right, or we can have some columns. And so I see that columns, even if we make them fixed width, this is probably going to be the trick to exactly get these to line up. And so that's the route, that's the choice that I'm gonna make here for this. Uh, even though you could have said the same thing over here, uh, but when it comes down to like a two by two matrix or two by three, um, sometimes the decision is about equal. So just pick something and go with it. And then, you know, if you make a decision here at this level and it doesn't work out, pretty easy to back out. Pretty easy to, yeah, back out of that decision and then just make something different. Whereas if you kind of structurally don't have a framework like this video is sharing uh, and you're just kind of going at it um, the best the best you know how, which, which uh, you know, props to that enthusiasm. Um, but what we're aiming to accomplish here is uh, gain some understanding that would uh, make things more efficient as things are being built. So um, let's see what I can do here. It looks like this needs to be a little bit wider, potentially. No, let's see. And I might go with, just because of how I had this set up, and it's different than what I even, had even just said, if I did this with these two, and then I say group those elements in a row container, We can see I have two rows in a row, and what, if, what if, the reason for doing that is because what I'm intending to accomplish is, and so this one fits, fits with the content, 
I'm attempting to accomplish something where the breaks of these are all the same. And I said columns just a moment ago, but as you can see, as I was building this and I was just throwing some pre-made stuff up here, that there, is, there, isn't, uh, there isn't a for sure right or wrong answer in this. As you can see, there is what works for you and what goes for fast. And as you get into the flow of building uh, and as you get more experience in bubble, you'll start to sense this as well, that you'll just go with, how, with what feels natural. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add padding 10 left, 10 right here. And I'm going to say that this, because these are all roughly the same from that point to there, I believe that I'm able to get the, get what I would like. And then this is a percentage. Why don't I just go and copy this? I might still have that on here, paste, formatting, yes. Still on the clipboard. Looks like this is bold for some reason. Or bolder. Results, KPIs. So it looks like we also need group these into a row over here. Um, this is row one. And what we don't want is a, we don't want a minimum width. want something like this. But we want this one to stretch out because this is the outer container. And so what I'm building is this offer results and KPIs. So let's see. It would appear that this is the displayed calculated value that, uh, and this is like, this is a, a displayed no, rather, this is just a known value. Somebody has a budget and they want to spend this amount of, uh, of money in what appears to be you know, this, this business dashboard. And then this is what uh, was spent. And then this is a, what a, a KPI that would compare those. Uh, not that this is the important part of this, but more explaining the um, anatomy of or structure of this and uh, why some of these. So if this is an outcome, Perhaps, uh, let's see, so we're going to just call this results and then KPIs. You can see that, let's see, I'm actually going to group these elements in a row, and then I'm gonna copy and paste this, and I'm gonna group these elements into a row because I'm trying to mimic what is here. So this was something that I'll change these back after. But what I wanna get after here is I want to I want to take advantage of the structure of this. So now I'm going to copy, and you can see uh, there's a there's a bunch of different ways to accomplish the same thing. And again, as you get into the flow of things, you'll find what works for you. So we have outcomes, and then what I want for this row is 
nothing for now. And then this was results. And this is KPIs. I actually really like the font, so that's a 12, size 12. I'm going to stick with that. I actually prefer that. So, and then we'll delete this. Okay, so now we're getting closer to what we're aiming to have happen here. And this we're going to call row 2. It has no maximum height. And then I just want to double check on all these. The line spacing. As I try and determine where this little extra bit is coming from, but Call it good. Row three. Okay, so we're uh, we're making good progress. We we had to deal uh, the challenge with this next one was dealing with a four column setup and then just having these uh, show in the spots where we'd like them to show. And actually, we'll make that zero. We'll make this four. And then what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get these lined up. And it looks pretty good. So we've got row four. And row so let's go and find these. So this is actually row one. And then now let's go ahead and fill in what this table requires it to be for the particulars. And because some of these are different um, for the for how wide these are, I just wanted to see how this looks. And so, what I think could have could happen here is I think that on the right side of this. I would like to put a margin left of maybe eight. Nope, oh, sorry, on the right side. And because there's only four of these, there's another way to do this where you could select all of them and then you could right click and say paste the formatting on all of them. All right, I'm going to call that good enough. I'm going to call that good enough. And then now over here, so let's see. This would actually be row five. This would be row two, three. Let's go and find this in the elements tree. That's what I thought. Okay, so clean enough. Some of these ones, as we can see in here, are still have some copies and, and whatnot. But um, because none of these are inputs, uh, I'm going to call it good for now. And then go over here and 
delete out. So let's see what we have next here. We have one of these, a couple columns, and uh, you know, sometimes it's good to look ahead on what things have done. You know, it turns out maybe I should have done these as columns, 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 uh, because then those two columns would transfer here and then we'd have this over there. But um, the other thing about what's here is that we can reuse it for this over here, because one, two, three, four um, results in KPIs for how that looks. So let's go ahead and just start deleting out these. And note, in order to select the top part of the group, sometimes you have to whoop, delete your way through some of the other ones. So we're going to see about shrinking this. And then we have this big gold one. So this gold one, what, is it, what does it look like from other things that we have so far? We're going to want one of these things over there. Um, and this is where you can make a call as a person who will be designing a final thing as it relates to this. This one, the font is uh, different than some of these other ones. It would seem to make it consistent across the board would be the, um, would be the appropriate thing to do from a UI standpoint. So we'll go with that. Um, these results, KPIs. So basically, it looks like we want one of these and then we want uh, and so I, what I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to have two columns. This will be our column one. And I'm going to grab this uh, and find it here because I think, yep. So we actually want this customer values for now. We want to give it a height of like 400 because we want some room to work with. We can delete that out of there. Drop in this column from here and then copy and paste that to get oh. So let's actually double check this customer value one. We want this to be a row. So now what we can do is we can build this here with these inputs and then we can pull over these And I dropped it into a row. So let's see what we have. Yep. So for this row, maybe we do this or this. Yep, this looks closer to what was up here. And then we can say fit with the content. We can check this thing out. We might make this one smaller. Right, because it would more mimic this, which is probably the route we'll go. But for the time being, what we're gonna do is get these here and just get ourselves set up with the first row because again, do the styling in the first part and then make it down to all the stuff on the next one. And I'll just say at this point, fabulous job for hanging in with all of this work because this is, uh, this is quite tedious of what it takes to lay out a dashboard. But again, for those curious and uh, wanting to see the whole thing built for something like this, this is, this is kind of what it is from, uh, from start to finish. So let's carry on with our goals here. Uh, what we can say is that um, we'll probably want to put a maximum width onto these. of let's say perhaps 60 or 80. And then we're gonna grab, let's go ahead and grab this largest one, 
because that is the from a, a spacing standpoint, this is what constrains things. So we can see that. So we can see that um, if we were to remove this. And so we're starting to have some of that results underneath there. So it looks like um, we'll just go ahead and get rid of all this stuff. And then what we'll do next is we will uh, get the spacing set up so that the column on the left side is, is bigger uh, here. So that way this thing can be bigger. And so that means what needs to happen on this thing is that we can, if we have a, um, a max width of 120, Okay, so yep, so we can remove that. That's what I was aiming to try and find. And then now we've got we've got much more uh, we've got much much more space to work with. Goal sales booking rate, and we can see about the letter spacing. These have a maximum width, they do not. You know, maybe what we're gonna do for this middle column to get a little bit more spacing. For this middle column, we can actually remove the, or is it on these ones? We can remove this because it has it on the other sides. So we don't need 40 here, we just, we would have 20. We actually want to grab the parent of this one. No, nope, wait. So it looks like this needs to be relabeled outcomes. So tons of work, right, to um, nail all this stuff down, but getting there. All right, let's press on to, this could have a max width of, let's say, maybe we want to give this a margin left of 10. Oh, wait, that's padding. We just want to give it some space from, nope, that's not the, what we want to do. What we want to do is come in here and give it that. And then if we give that 90, we can see that We've solved the we've solved what is the uh, hardest spacing constraint, and then these other ones will just fall in the line. So what we can go ahead and do here after deleting some of these other ones out. And there, you could always draw groups around things as well to um, make it easier to just delete one thing out. Uh, and that can be a great way to work as well. One thing I want to check here is the height of this. It's 20. So I actually want the height of these. It says 16. So I'm going to have this one have a minimum width of 20. so that they all stay in line as they go down. 
Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 of these. And I would say that this is the funnest part of the tutorial to watch someone label things in bubble on YouTube. It's just the best, isn't it? Uh, all right, so we said 12 of these, so that's six. Here's seven. Here's eight. Whoop. Here's nine, 10, 11, 12. Awesome. So now what we can do is we can grab this. And actually finish off what we what we have here. For this part of it. And then we'll be so close to the finish line. We'll be we're already more than halfway done. We'll actually be two quarters done. So let's say we did goal call booking rate, goal call show rate. The one, that one is already there. So we could then goal call sales show here. Goal sales conversion rate. So lots of stuff to track in the world of business and dashboards, which means there's great opportunity in the world of bubble to build dashboards that help people understand what's going on in their businesses. And great, so there's that. Uh, let's see, for these ones, we'll just go ahead and give them labels here so that way they can Get matched up. To their proper. Let's take a look at how we're doing. After all this great work. That's very close. Okay, cool. So we can see that this dashboard, um, we've got a little bit more to do here with filling this in. But as far as the layout and everything goes, compared to what we were um, intending to build for here, it's very, very close. So next up, looks like that could be the same. Uh, and we won't get into the particulars of the data stuff. I guess I'm just allowing myself to get ahead of myself. But it looks like we got 60, 60, 60. And we do want to... take care of these input things. That, that is an important thing, where things that are referencing other things. Whereas text, I mean text just kind of, it's just a static thing that's just there. But when things reference other stuff, to stay on top of all the details in your app, which is great to do as the person building it or uh, doing it for others as a paid gig. Okay. Sixty, sixty, ninety, fifty, thirty. 
Do we have an option for percentage? No. So decimal would be the percentage in this case. Okay, and then a return on ad spend looks like that is a, or maybe that's a decimal, like a, like a 5.2 or something. 20, that's a great return on ad spend. Oh, there's a percentage. Okay, great. So look at this amazing, uh, amazing chart that we are so close to wrapping up. And we can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It looks like it rode up some, even though that's twenty. Let's see what our um, has a bottom margin of four, and this has a bottom margin of four at twenty. Okay, I think it starts off. So if we give that a top margin of four or two, it's probably off by a pixel. Let's see what we could, uh, I wonder if we just dropped a five into all of these. Okay, I would say I'm not going to fudge it anymore. It's probably good enough. Great. So uh, this customer, let's see, this is not customer values. That was this one over here. This is group goals. Awesome. So uh, fantastic work. We don't need a minimum there now. We can bring that up and we can double check again and admire the amazing results from the work so far. So cool. Uh, looking good. Now let's move on to the final column. So here in this column, let's see what this is most like. One, two, three, four. It's reminding me a lot of this one. Conversions and constraints. Let's see. Minimum, minimum, minimum. Okay, so yep, so that's looking a lot like this here. Actually, it's not the column one I want. It is this G outcomes. So copy that, paste that. And then on this other one, what I had done, on this outcomes, is I had taken off this 20 margin, left and right. And so I'll put it back on on this one. Because what do we have here, 317? And just trying to trying to get the trying to get the little thing to show up here. Let's see, three seventeen there. Three fifty seven. So we got a little extra width on that one. So we probably want this one to be about three seventeen as well, which maybe someday we'll see that. But for now, apparently no. See if we can collapse this and hide it. Oh. 
Okay, anyways. Let's move on. And let's go ahead and build this. Into here. All right. Closing in on the home stretch. Amazing work to hang in and show such um, eagerness to learn about this this world of bubble. Because dashboards are um, even if you're building something that's more user facing, a lot of times you might want something that the app owners will see and be able to add up all the stats about the app and see things of that nature. So. This is um, this is where it's at for that. All right, so let's see. These are slightly smaller numbers, so that's good news. And then this, the label for this one is constraints and conversions. Okay, so what we might want to do here, and this is good to just check, test this type of stuff out, so we might want to, on the left side, make this six, or four, or we just limit the characters here, seems to be the better result, the better choice. On uh, this one, we can take away its right margin, perhaps, for how tight this table is. And we can always come back in and work on this uh, later as well to get the exact, exact uh, spacing setup. And actually, I would say in this case, just based upon how this is, um, I would, if I were to do this again, it's already built. Um, I would have one column here. I would break this into one, two, three, four columns. That would be the clean way to do it. And in fact, why not do that? We're here. We're making it happen. This is what we'll do. So we got to see it happen over here, but then when, as we were just building and going in the flow of things, and that's good to do in Bubble, and a lot of times that can be the fastest way through the result. And then, like I mentioned before, sometimes you'll, wanna, you'll make a decision, you'll need to back out of it. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to back out of that decision. And so what I'm going to, what I'm going to add to this is I would like to, the way I see this being laid out, is one column, two column, three column, but then this column is going to have another group in it that is broken into two into a row, and that's a row of two columns, and then we take it down from there. So uh, here's what we'll do. Maybe we'll leave one of these for styling sake. We'll, we'll bring this one out to 
give us some space to work with, and then we'll drop some groups in here. And let's see, so this one, the way it would be, one, two, three, four, is this gonna be a row? And within the row, we're gonna start with Let's see. Because this, this is gonna stretch across here. So I'm gonna break this into one, two, three, that's right. And then This one is going to be a column, and in this column, in this column, I'm going to have this piece of text. And then underneath this column, I'm going to have a group with a row. So this row will be a row that will contain column one, column two. So uh, we're going to start that. Start off with putting KP. Mm. See if we can drag and drop. Oh yeah, this is going to be a column. So just make sure that we set up all these column, column. Not fixed with. Results. We're actually going to remove all of this stuff because we're kind of starting from scratch. And I'm, I'm showing off, you know, the method of like, if you go down that route and then you want to change it, um, what you would do is perhaps something like this. So maybe we want to make this a maximum width of... So this has left and right padding of four. Go ahead and give this. Uh... Again, I'm zeroing all this stuff out so that way I can mentally think how to start from scratch. Below this KPIs, I want to give it a bottom margin of let's say 10, and then maybe a bottom of 4, and then so now I can repeat this down. So there's my KPIs column. And then I'll do the same with this. What I'll actually do here is I'll go copy, geez, copy, formatting, paste, formatting. And then on this one, like the others, zero it out. Uh, what did I say for this? I think I dropped a 10 at the bottom here. And I dropped a four on the left. Four on the left, four on the bottom. So we maintain this nice. And you know what? These might change, actually. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna have too many of them because of how the, uh, how tall. The other text is. So let's see, this group I want to be a row because in this row I'm going to drop one column, two column. 
and then I'm going to remove this and quote unquote start over from scratch as well on this one. And so what do we have here? Well, uh, really we just want these two pieces of data and we don't want anything related to results or KPIs. We just want this piece of text. And then this piece of text here. Okay, and so, so now we can get things pretty dialed in. So we can back out of some of this stuff, back out of this. When we look at what's going on here, Let's bring ourselves out to the elements tree and see what we have. So right now, we have a row. Okay, yep, so we're gonna delete this row. And we're gonna check on, let's see, bottom, 10-4, 10-4. Seems this has a minimum height of 16. Okay, that's what's the difference. We'll say this one could have a minimum height of 16 as well. And then we'll actually do this. Yep, can we do that? And that. And then now, let's go ahead so that this is a. Column two, column three. So as a reminder, I've kind of showed a couple ways to get away with the same, same thing. And that is when you're trying to line things up exactly perfectly, you can kind of fudge things a little bit like I did over here when it's a smaller amount of data. But here, um, there's just a ton of it and I want it to look nice. So I went a more quote unquote official route of creating these um, creating these columns so that there's these nice breakpoints in between these that draw you know the table out in, the, in a nice way. And then th our next task, and we'll be done with this box here. Our next task task is to determine like the the exact um, height of these and, and and where they should be laid out, and then copy them down. And then from that point, what we can do is um, have everything filled in. So it looks like we're going to need to make this one so what do we got here within Got this group, we don't want anything there. So we're going to have this as our row. Maybe I'll just call it column A and column B. Cool. So I think that this is going to have this minimal height. I'm gonna say give it a minimal height of 20. And I'll just do that across here. It's got a bottom margin of 10. As long as these are all consistent. And let's see, do I have the text set as center vertically? I do. So I actually want that, I want it to ride up to the top on all of those. And then it has 
and I want to make sure that margins, so I'm trying to get the height right on all of these. So margins 10, so if I have a margin 10 here, then everything should start at the same horizontal line here. And this max cost per link click, that's our most challenging one to deal with for spacing. And what we'll do from here then is we'll give this a bottom of four, or let's say six. And then this is the next most challenging one to deal with. And again, still just working with spacing here. But now, I think I could turn this completely off. And then, so this, let's see, line spacing, so it's 12, and we don't have it, we're saying fit height to content, so we're saying 12 plus 6, so that's 18. So here, we also have 12, let's make sure we have 6, and then these should line up. And then this, we would want to make sure it's 12, 6. We just want to make sure it's 18. So that's 12, 6. And then so we'll just have to delete these all out. But that's fine because we've got, we've got our spacing just how we want it. So that's 12, line spacing in 1 means it's 12. Add 6. OK, cool. And did that math right there? I hope that it was helpful to see what exactly was the thinking and thoughts that go into that. So uh, now we're ready to go ahead and fill in the rest of this table. And hopefully you can see why sometimes it's, it's worth it to pause or not. Um, because you can see the amount of time that that took as well. However, the result of only laying this out once, so it looks like we just want to edge that into there. And that's going to be the biggest number here. Probably won't pay over $1,000 with four for that. We can always remove decimal places. So we probably should be pretty good there. And then over on the result side, uh, I am filling some of these in with these first things because I'm curious on the spacing. I want to catch this looks like our long or our widest one here, but you could see how that could potentially be even wider. It's possible. And then I'm looking at this, and I'm. Uh, kind of comparing it to the other parts of the chart here. And it looks like I would prefer to have a little bit more breathing space, to be honest. So on each of these now, that's why I only did four to start with. I kind of wanted to get a rough in because I'll have to update this a lot. On all of these, but that's fine because it's Again, it's one of those things where the work is done once and then on it sits doing its thing, reporting on a as a dashboard for many, many people's benefits. So that is super awesome to be able to get and position ourselves in a place where the work is done once and it's leveraged a ton in the future. Cool. So uh, let's go ahead and make a bunch of these.
All right. So then we can see what it would be like minimum opt-in rate, minimum book call shows, minimum call shows. We got a little low, little copy paste happy. A little zealous there. Minimum sales bookings, minimum sales shows. Yada, yada, yada. Business stuff, business stuff, business stuff. And we can knock out a couple of these, back it off. Okay, awesome. So we can see that now for this column, we could bring this down. And then what we have set up here. And then now what we have set up here, let's see, it looks like something with three columns. Hmm. And then something with two columns. So I'm gonna try and get away with, uh, let's see. One column, row, 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 row. That's how I'm gonna plan this. I'm gonna add to the top of this 20. I'm gonna change this one to reporting. I'm gonna delete one of these. And then let's see what we got. So I said, row, 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 row. Um, it looks kind of close to this, so I'm gonna go with this. So let's see if I put that there, and I go with ad spend. We've got one number and then some kind of calculation that would appear, so. Here we'll put in our number. We'll delete this one. Whoop. Let's see, 2,500 goes here. And this label goes here. And then we'll add link clicks. a solid number here and then negative 2.97 percent and it's this color red and again kind of fudging it on the exact as you can see the exact uh, location of this stuff so maybe on this one I, will, I don't want to make it fit to width to content, I want to give it a max width of 40, as well as a, well, I just want to make it fixed width at 40, perhaps. So this is another way to, um, you know, get a few things, like we, we, we went with the whole, you know, pretty structured columns layout here. You could also, you know, we were fudging it over here, and it has a little bit of a, of a you know, difference, but grabbing things and making them fixed width is also another great way to create consistency of edging across tables. Okay, so leads, book calls, and so what we're going to do here Trying to see, there we go, 223. So maybe I want to say that this has a you know, width of, and 
and then I want to do one of these. His book calls the most, yep, so, okay. So maybe what I'll do is I'll grab this. And then let's see what I do here. I'll just go ahead and delete this leads one. Just so I get this nice thing here. So leads, booked calls, and we're on the home stretch, folks. Calls showed. Sales bookings. Yeah, I want it here. Call shows, sales bookings. Sale showed. Sale, let's see. Sale shows. Packages sold. MMR sales. Cool. So now all we're left to do really is delete this out, all these extras that have helped to serve as a starting point. And perhaps, let's see, from this one, we look at its layout. We may want to No, I think I think what I'm aiming for here is actually that. Four there. Add four there. Get a little bit of a little bit of a breathing room. As it were, we can delete that out. We can delete that out. And then now, finally. Let's get a final look at this dashboard. Oh yeah, one of the things I did here when I was trying to work with something was I made it invisible. Okay, so uh, here we are with our final for our final part for this video, and you know what? Given the length of this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the um, I'm going to put the part where we make it responsive into the next uh, into the next video because what we want to have happen is these to stack on top of each other and not go down like that. So we put some minimum widths in there, and um, I know I said at the start of this video what we would do is we would. Um, I would link to you in the time descriptions in the uh, in the in the time uh, stamps in the description of this video where it starts. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say anyone that is getting that from the time who, who clicked over that um, part of making it mobile is in another video just because of the length of this one. So head on over. That link is in this description for you to check that out and learn how to make this stack on it on itself. Um, but fantastic job for hanging in here to see what it takes to build out a dashboard um, given a rough UI from uh, as, a, as a requirement for, for putting something in. All that's left for this dashboard to function is you know uh, a little bit of data to connect it to the database so that it automatically populates and saves and then make some calculations here and make these parts dynamic. And then all of a sudden, boom, a fully functioning dashboard. This part was the layout. Thanks so much for hanging in on this long video. If you liked or subscribe, or if you like this video, 
uh, please give it a like or subscribe. It means a lot, and I'll see you in another video.